And now, I'd like to turn it over to our day, today's presenter, Paul Pecorius. Thank you very much, Linda. I'm looking forward to a nice uh, water webinar and there's some practical uh, and guidelines and knowledge of how you can best protect your boiler system. So we'll be talking about a variety of different things today. Our uh, webinar will be covering these topics. We're dealing with uh, mainly low pressure boilers, less than 900 PSI, and we'll probably spend more time with less than 600 PSI because that's the predominant boilers available. However, we will be talking about and all of these pressure boilers. We'll be talking about what water quality is needed. We're going to be talking about how to protect your boiler and certainly what treatments work well and some that don't work very well. And what we're going to be talking about is certainly what the controls are re required for providing a good protected boiler. Here's a hardworking boiler, as you can see, which is reliable and happy, but we certainly won't want to be able to give them any problems. But we'll be talking about what can be done to protect these boilers. First of all, let's feed, feed the boiler with good quality water. Uh, that's one of the key areas for boiler water protection and operation. We must, of course, maintain good water treatment controls. If we don't do that, of course, logically, the, the performance on the treatment program is going to be poor. We need to be able to handle varying steam demands. That is going to impact substantially on water quality and also on steam quality, so we'll be dealing with that as well. You need to be able to handle a startup and shutdown of boilers so that we, properly so that we can actually protect your boiler during those critical areas of startup and shutdown. And when you're not uh, using the boiler and you've got it on layup conditions, whether it's wet or whether it's dry layups, you need to be able to protect that boiler so it does not get any corrosion problems or deposit problems while it's laid up. The main objectives of our boiler water treatment program certainly are to prevent deposits on the boiler tubes. We need to be able to prevent corrosion of all metals in the entire boiler circuit. And the cycle that we have is the boiler itself, the condensate lines, the feed water system, etc. So cuts going to we need to be able to protect all the metals that the boiler water system is contacting. We need to be able to produce this good steam quality for all uses and at all times, particularly when there's demands for that particular steam for various processes and operations. We certainly want to prevent any boiler tube failures. Uh, once you get a failure, you'll have to shut the boiler down, and we don't want to do that type of thing at all. So, again, proper startup and shut down and lay up of boilers is very, very critical. Let's talk about what an effective boiler water treatment program actually entails. Uh, we need to prevent these deposits on the boiler surfaces. Why? Because we can lose heat transfer. Uh, during that heat transfer, we will overheat possibly the boiler tubes that can weaken the metal due to overheating, and that, that weakening of the metal will eventually cause a failure and a blowout on that particular metal. So deposits are extremely critical to prevent forming on any boiler tube surfaces. We need to be able, of course, control any corrosion coming from oxygen. Oxygen causes pitting of boiler tubes and the production of a lot of iron oxide. We want to certainly protect that boiler from oxygen corrosion. The last thing we want to deal with, of course, uh, without uh, uh, oxygen corrosion is, of course, low pH. We don't want to really get into conditions where the pH is below 9, except in very high-pressure boilers where we're dealing with specific operations. But uh, the boiler water is hot. When it's hot, that means the corrosion reaction goes faster. This can cause corrosion in pH levels below 9. So we may have to be operating at pH is much higher than that to prevent any red water problems in a boiler. If you find red water, you know that the treatment program is, is corroding the metal surfaces. So the latter area of the outside the boiler is the condensate system where the steam is coming down and uh, condensing. We're using that steam effectively, but we better look out for any contamination that may occur. This type of contamination would be rust, iron oxide, or copper oxides coming from the metals in the, in the condensate steam lines. And if we have any oil, et cetera, they could be getting into the condensate. We don't want any of that coming back into the boiler because of the contributor deposition and overheating of the tubes. And, of course, we must produce good steam quality, again, all the time. 
This is a picture of what they did years ago, and that is to prepare a elixir for boiler ailments. Now, I don't know whether this was for protecting the boiler or whether it was really protecting the uh, uh, the operators. But anyway, what does it take to have good water quality is the key here. First of all, we need to be able to find out well, if good water quality is coming into the boiler, it's going to provide us extremely efficient equipment operation. This is going to give us the long life and the return on investment that we're looking for in boiler operations. It's going to optimize our water use and prevent any wastewater or blowdown from the, from the boiler system, at least no excessive amount of blowdown. Uh, we certainly have to look at cost-effective treatment programs to be able to protect against corrosion and deposits. And certainly, good water quality will help reduce maintenance of the boiler and labor for attending that particular boiler system. Well, good water quality depends upon these different items. The big driving force for water quality is really the boiler pressure. The higher the boiler pressure, the greater the water quality has to be, or the more improved water quality has to be. We certainly have the boiler operation as another direct fa factor. If we have to have good water quality, we have to know what that boiler operation is relative to what the design is for steam and production, whether it's actually going to be using it for heating or what and what type of the water quality we need as well as steam quality. The other area that we look at is this many boilers have a design factor that have to be considered. This is again based on the different boiler manufacturers. Some are more sensitive to uh, carryover than others are and uh, certainly circulation of, of water through the boilers are really dependent upon the design. So design is another factor that comes into play to provide good quality uh, steam operation and boiler protection. We need to be able to have, of course, consistent makeup water quality coming into the boiler. It's got to be effective for that particular boiler pressure and operation. Here are some guidelines that we have, and a lot of people utilize these guidelines. This is ASME, Boiler Water Guidelines, uh, and uh, ASME is American Society for Mechanical Engineers. They give us guidelines for what the boiler should have in regard to silica levels, total alkalinity, hydrate alkalinity, and certainly conductivity in micromoles. And we're showing it here up to 600 PSI. Uh, they also have it for fire tube boilers, and fire tube boilers are a little more sensitive to various things. Uh, and we'll talk more about fire tube boilers, but uh, here's some limitations on 0 to 300 PSI where fire tube boilers are mainly used. Very seldom do they use it for anything higher. Uh, ASME also has boiler water guidelines for uh, boilers that are operating with water in the tubes and where they have superheaters as well as turbines. Uh, this gives you a rundown as the different, different constituents in the boiler water that are limited uh, at each particular pressure value. We showed you what it might be if higher than 900 PSI, and as you can tell, the, the improved water quality is absolutely necessary to get higher and higher pressures uh, for any of these boilers. And, of course, we have one other one, a guideline that many people utilize, and that, of course, is the American Boiler Manufacturers Association, and they provide, of course, boiler water limits as well, and they're doing the same thing here, showing the type of limits that normally are normally involved.